Let's move on to task 3 in the demo lab. A review of the lab documentation reminds us that the goal for this lab is to be able to get onto the console of either PC1 or PC2 and be able to do a successful ping to the other side of the network to PC3 or PC4. Now just to review what we've accomplished so far with task 1, we have configured serial 0 on router A so that it can successfully connect and move traffic across the serial link to router B, and we have configured fast Ethernet 00 on router A and have verified that it can move traffic down to PC1. PC1 and PC2. So it would appear at least that all of the links from PC1 and PC2 to router A and then to router B are all up and actively moving traffic. So let's get onto the console of PC1 and see if we can ping over to say PC3. You can see that I now have a console window open for PC1. If you look down in the bottom of the window, you can see that there's a tab for the console of router A, as well as a tab for the console of PC1, and I'm free to switch back and forth between those with just a mouse click. The way that I did that was by hovering over PC1 in the netmap panel up above, and I chose right click, or I did a right click, and chose configure. I'm gonna click down in the command console panel put my cursor focus back down there and use a ping to test and see if I have connectivity over to PC3 or PC4 from the console of PC1. You can see that I've entered the IP address of PC3 which is 192.168.200.2 and the ping has failed. By looking at the output in the console window for PC1 we can see that our ping attempt from PC1 over to PC3 has failed so we're going to need to do a little troubleshooting to figure out where might be the problem. So what I'm going to do is to go back to the console of router A and I'm going to use the show IP route command to examine the entries in router A's IP routing table. I can see that router A only has information about its directly connected networks. My ping to PC3 was to the 192.168 200.3 IP address which falls in the 192.168.200 network and by examining the entries in router A's IP routing table I can see that there is no entry for the 192.168.200 network. So how might we correct this situation? We have a couple of options. One would be the use of static routes which we can see that we don't have otherwise they would already be in the IP routing table so we could create some static routes and add them now or we could do as the lab document suggests suggests and configure a dynamic routing protocol on router A. Router B already has the eGrip dynamic routing protocol configured, so the best course of action for us at this point would be to follow the suggestion in the lab document and configure eGrip on router A so that router A and router B can update each other with information about the networks to which each router is directly connected. Let's proceed as the lab documentation suggests and configure the eGrip dynamic routing protocol on router A. We're going to go into configuration mode and use the router egrip command to configure an egrip process for router A. Notice that we use the autonomous system number of 100 and that number needs to match the autonomous system number used in egrip configuration of router B. Now that we're in router configuration mode and have begun our egrip configuration process, we need to configure the directly connected networks for router A so that router A can share information about its directly connected networks to all of its eGrip neighbors. In this simple topology, the eGrip neighbor is router B. You can see that we've configured 10.0.0.0 network and the 192.168.100 network. These are the two networks that are directly connected to router A. We have exited out of configuration mode and now let's use the show IP route command again and when we do we'll see that router A has in fact learned about the networks that are connected to router B and if we were to go over and look we would see that router B has in turn learned about the networks that are directly connected to router A. So router A and router B each know about the networks that are directly connected to the other. Now that we have configured eGrip on router A let's go back to the console of PC1 and retry those pings that were failing earlier and see if 
they're successful now. Before, we attempted to ping PC3, which is at IP address 192.168.200.2, and that ping failed. You can still see the output on the console that reminds us of that failure. So let's give it a try again, now that we have configured eGrip on router A, and router A knows what to do with traffic addressed to the 192.168.200 network, where it was simply dropping that traffic before. We can see that the ping to 192.168.200.2, which is the IP address of PC3, now succeeds, as does the ping to PC4. So this verification step tells us that we have successfully completed all the objectives for this demo lab. Thanks for taking a few moments to view this video demo. For more information about Boson NetSim and our XM Max exam simulation products, check us out on the web at boson.com.